Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's coffee lecture. So now it's time to welcome our guest, Andrea Hacker. We are ready for your interesting talk about questionable publishing practices. Thanks for having me. I hope it'll be interesting. And more than that, I hope I will be done in 10 minutes. I can't promise that, but I'll do my best. Please whistle me back when we get towards 10 and I'm off on some tangent. So here we go. Um, uh, my talk today is about questionable publishing practices. Um, I want to sketch out very roughly a few challenges and pitfalls um, that um, you uh, as researchers and we as, um, as librarians are witnessing. And we're going to quickly look at a couple of strategies that, uh, that I'd like to suggest um, to circumvent some of these these um, concerns. Um, now we could talk about um, concerns um, uh, towards the publishing um, industry as such, um, including stuff behind paywalls, um, subscription models and the like, but I will today focus on open access practices. Um, as you know, um, there are different ways to publish in open access. Um, I will be focusing primarily on um, open access gold, um, which unfortunately has become somewhat synonymous with uh, with the idea that uh, it is an author pays model that means uh, this is the open access business model um, where authors are charged for the publication uh, there are two different uh, ways of doing that um, either you publish in a pure open access journal and uh, that is digital first where all content is made open access immediately or you do this in uh, a so-called hybrid journal um, where you are publishing in a subscription journal, but uh, this subscription journal also makes um, content available in open access for money, usually a lot of it. This is the area where we witness the most um, questionable practices arising and uh, and giving people headaches. Now, I will say a couple of words later on, if I get to it, um, about Open Access Green, because this too, um, we've seen some here too, we have seen some developments that are somewhat concerning. Um, open Access Green, you will recall, is self-archiving. This is your manuscript. You should not be able to have to pay for doing something with your manuscript. But um, sure enough, there are some developments that uh, that go in that direction. Okay, quickly, gold um, APC-based model, a couple of words more on the left-hand side, more in detail what uh, hybrid publishing has evolved into. Um, this is at the core, this model of um, uh, the big read and publish deals. You will have heard of that. The University of uh, Bern subscribes to a few of those deals with Springer, with Elsevier and, uh, and, and Wiley and so forth. Um, basically, this means that a university gives a publisher money, usually a lot of it, um, to have access to the content uh, uh, that this publisher puts out, uh, but also to make sure that they're um, their researchers can publish in the journals that they that are subscribed uh, in open access. Please never think that this is for free. It isn't. It costs money. The money comes from central li library funds. And um, we will talk about the sustainability of this model um, in, a, in a little while. Um, the other model you see on the right hand side, this is what I already mentioned. These are the uh, digital native uh, uh, publishers that have uh, arisen along with open access in the last 15, 20 years. Here's some examples. Biomed Central will mean something to you, plus PeerJ, eLife, also very important in your field, and the Swiss uh, two publishing houses, Frontiers and MDPI. Now, along with the rise of this model of author pace, um, we witnessed the rise of predatory publishing. And this is probably something that most of you are familiar with, have heard of, or have been exposed to. And um, this is a major concern, has been a concern for several years now. Um, and I was thinking about calling this coffee lecture predatory publishing practices, but I, I backed away from that because I find it is increasingly difficult to define this. 
what we are witnessing. Uh, predatory, um, you see here two definitions. Um, predatory um, publishing presupposes that there's a victim. And there also, it's also, it has this, it has a very violent association to it. And perhaps in the beginning of open access, when this model um, of, of author pays started to gain traction, you would have a lot of cowboys out there who were just trying to make a quick buck and take advantage of the people who who either had to or wanted to um, uh, shift their publishing activity towards open access. But it's not that easy anymore. And if you look at the definition, for example, on the right hand side of the all European academies, um, Alea, um, and you look at that definition, you could argue that some of these um, some of these parameters would fit um, some legacy publishers as well. So it's it's not that easy, and hence I chose the word questionable because I find it is less fraught, less hefty. So let's look at a couple of questionable publishing practices. First, volume. Um, here is a little graph that I think looks uh, shows quite clearly and 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 convincingly that we are in the middle of a deluge of information um, that is coming out of, of publishing houses. Um, in less than ten years, the content has doubled. Uh, how to process that i don't know and and even though we are standing on the brink of um of another real game changer with with artificial intelligence that might help us to make sense of all of this all of this information i i wager a bet that this is not going to stop this development but to the contrary that ai is going to see uh the further rise of volume uh in the years ahead the second questionable publishing practice that I need to mention um, here is the sustainability. I mentioned that at the beginning of the first slide. Um, here's a link to a study in 2021. Things haven't changed, but they found back then that the per article global average APC has increased at a, a rate that goes far beyond inflation. And you can Believe me that the prices have not gone down since 2021, since the study came out, to the contrary. So the question is how long we can play along with this APC-based business model uh, that is extremely lucrative and is ripping huge holes into budgets. Um, my advice to you as researchers would be don't get too comfortable although it might be comfortable, but don't get too comfortable with read and publish um, and open access fund and SNF um, paid APCs, because I don't think that we can do it this way um, from here on out long term. I don't think that's sustainable. I have more challenges, more concerns, more questionable things to, to consider. Um, you need to consider um, um, avoiding fallacies and paradoxes. On the left-hand side, the first three points that I put down there, uh, fallacies um, that were for a very long time associated with, um, with predatory publishing, right? So the first wave of making money um, um, with bogus publication uh, in open access. Um, and Fair enough, you can look at them. You are not helpless prey as researchers, right, who are being taken advantage of. Uh, not all research published in those outlets is necessarily bad, and not all predatory publishers come from the global south. These are old fallacies that still linger on here and there, but you know, I think they're easily cast aside. Not so easy is the one underneath this. This is a this is a newer development. Um, new models by traditional and prestigious publishers are not necessarily always acceptable. And that is something to consider. An example here is the American Chemical Society, very prestigious, very well established, and they started to charge for open access green, which is what I put on the on the first slide, if you remember. Right. So if you want to publish your manuscript, your auto-accepted manuscript in open access green without an embargo, you have to give the American Chemical Society two and a half thousand dollars that's not necessarily acceptable. So you see that things are starting to become more difficult to grasp and, and more difficult to, to, to unravel. There's a paradox here, and this is a very important point. Um, in APC-based open publishing, 
you as the researchers have become the client. It used to be in subscription that the libraries and the readers were the client. They brought the money to the table to access the content. That has shifted. That has shifted towards the author, which means that now you as the author are the client. Now, the paradox lies in the fact that, of course, as a client, a company is going to try and make your client experience as positive as possible. And in, 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 that, in that quest, what happens is that they're trying to be efficient, that they're trying to optimize the things that you need optimizing with, for example, turnaround time. The paradox lies in the fact that this optimization is met with, um, with quite some suspicion and, and hesitation on the part of, of, of researchers. Um, and I think that is because researchers are not used to the idea that they have power towards the, uh, the publishing houses, but you are the folks who are coming or showing up with the money, right? And, and hence, um, um, publishers are, are very much interested in, in making sure that you have a good experience. Um, the problem for you is how to tell the difference between a good offer an efficient offer that brings you further and does what it needs to do as a publication. And of course, a scam where you're being hoodwinked in paying more than you need to. I'm going to skip the next one because I'm afraid I'm just not going to make my 10 minutes otherwise. So um, so you can look at that on the on the slides. I'm going to send them around. The, li the links are live. It's a very, very interesting development uh, with MDPI, a big discussion about special issues, and you can have a little bit of a further information here. Um, I'm going to jump back in here where it says um, current discussions um, and where are we going next with open science. There's a lot going on at the moment. The Switzerland is at the moment negotiating, putting down the, the follow-up national open science strategy um, that is going to come uh, uh, out uh, in fall, we expect. And in something like that, you see that there are very different interest groups um, that are trying to come together and, and decide how best to move forward with um, scholarly communication amongst other things. And what you have is often conflicting goals. So it takes a long time to say, is APC-based models, is it good, is it bad? Are special issues good, are they bad? Are there alternatives that we should pursue and so forth? But what we shouldn't forget, and this is very, this is this is another, the second really important point I'd like to make. That is what Pablo uh, Barrero has, has uh, said in, 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 in an article that made quite some waves last year. And that is with the deluge of information, with uh, monetary interests and with uh, inflationary developments of output, um, it's important that we don't lose sight of scientific rigor. And particularly now that we are dealing with things like um, uh, artificial intelligence, I think that is something to really, really keep in mind. Now, where does that leave you? Well, I'm afraid that leaves you with some tough decisions. Um, <laughs> um, there is a lot to be said for APC-based publishing, which is where open science is at the moment. Uh, from your point of view as well, it's a fast publication. You have access to funding, hopefully. It's an... It's an Right? The client's um, journey, if you wish, is getting better and more convenient. But there are also things to take into consideration that are not so good. Sustainability, I already mentioned. Um, cranking up the, the paper mill, if you wish, to make make more um, make more content available is another. Um, there are questions about affordability and equity, right? Should publishing become a financial privilege? That's a question that is that is very much worth worth asking. And of course, there's also the concern about reputation and unwanted effects on career. If you throw five out of six publications into some special issue, how is that going to look on your CV? Whatever you do and however you decide, it is important for researchers to develop a sound publishing strategy. It's difficult right now, and we're still in the middle of these changes uh, in, in, the, in the landscape, but it is important that you know what, where, and why you publish for whom, and also how much you're willing 
to pay for it? Um, that Those are some, some fundamental questions that are really worth thinking about. Um, and no matter what decision you make, make sure you, you, you are informed before you submit your manuscript to one or the other outlet. If you want to know about those outlets, I collected some pointers here and some links um, where you can find more information on that. And of course, if you have uh, questions that you can't easily answer with any of these further resources, then please get in touch with us at the Open Science Open Access team. We're here to help and, uh, and we like doing it. So let us know. Thank you.